despite my misplay, <laughs> we did get the wing. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves 10 yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to the challenge week. Today we are doing our first deck with Grolnok the Omniverse, uh, or Omnivore, excuse me, not Omniverse. Uh, and I'm really excited for this one. This is brought to us by Uro, banned by all. Uro, thank you so much, my friend. It's always a pleasure to have you uh, joining in these challenge weeks. now. This is a Simic Mill Repeat deck, and I'm naming it Mill Repeat uh, for a number of reasons. One, it is just a self-mill deck. The idea is to mill a lot of cards, uh, hopefully, again, some of which are with the Omnivore that we can then replay, but we also have things like Wall of Lost Thoughts, We've got World Shaper, uh, we've got plenty of interesting stuff. Now, as we mill stuff, the Over Slime should hopefully gain some counters. And again, anything milled with uh, Grolnok here is gonna be able to uh, basically be played from Exile, which is just super helpful. Uh, now, we do also have things like Sludge Monster. Uh, so when this attacks or blocks, it can uh, put a slime counter on a creature that's gonna nullify some, some creatures, hopefully. And Garuda, which is gonna mill us again and hopefully reanimate some things, which is quite good. But not only that, we do have Gaia's Blessing, and this is where that repeat of the mill repeat comes in. So when this is put into our graveyard from our deck, we actually get to shuffle our graveyard into our deck and essentially start over again. Uh, we can continuously mill, hopefully pulling out things with uh, Splendid Reclamation and even a World Shaper like lands to help fill up our, uh, our land slot on the board uh, to hopefully be able to play a lot of the extra stuff from the Omnivore or just anything that we happen to draw. So it's a really interesting list. Uh, we do have Mirror Hall Mimic. This is going to allow us to copy some things, which is quite nice. Uh, in particular, things like Garuda or the Sludge Monster would be kind of fun. Uh, and a little bit of counter magic here just as a way to uh, to kind of deal with stuff, uh, which is very, very good, especially given that this is one for each card in our graveyard. That really does a lot. We can, of course, cycle it away as needed as well. So lots of opportunity here to do some really cool things. I'm excited to try this deck out out. We are going to send it through three games, see how it does, and again, whoever wins, whoever gets the most wins out of three this week is going to win a mystery proxy pack. Now, I do want to mention before we jump into this, two things. One, you can still submit decks for this one, so please feel free to do so. But two, on Wednesday, we will not be announcing another challenge week card. We are taking the next couple weeks off. It is going to be the holidays, uh, and so I want to take that time and just, and just enjoy it, not worry about anything. Uh, and so most likely the channel as a whole will take a little bit of a break until the new year, uh, but I don't know exactly when that'll be. I just want to give you guys a quick heads up. So without further ado, guys, let's jump into it. Uro, I wish you the best of luck. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. Uh, now, this is an interesting hand, but it's actually one I'm going to try and keep here. Don't have the highest of hopes, I'll be honest. Um, these kind of make it a little awkward, but we're going to see what we can do. Uh, World Shaper is quite good. I like that a lot. Uh, one thing I want to mention as well that as we're getting started with this, uh, if anybody didn't realize, uh, we have a TCG player store that I've been uploading a lot. I mean, a lot of product. We went from maybe 200 cards posted to over a thousand just in the last day or two. Uh, and we're continuously putting stuff up. I've got a stack more to upload. Uh, but all of that is for you guys to take a peek through. If you're interested in picking any of it up, please feel free. I'm selling off a lot of my excess stuff. I've got a lot of cards. Uh, I'm talking like 50,000 lot of cards. So uh, I am taking the time to kind of dwindle that down a little bit and I'm using TCG player to sell some of that off. Uh, so if you are interested, please check it out. Feel free to pick up any singles that we have there. We've got stuff down from, you know, just bulk rares and some two cent cards all the way up to things like Mana Crypt at like 160 bucks. Like we've got a lot of uh, variety of cards there. And again, more being added very regularly. So please do check that out. Um, I'm assuming this is going to be a counter burn deck. I'm going to try and go for the over slime here. Chances are this gets countered, but we do have a follow up one in hand, so I'm not terribly worried about that. We'll see what the opponent wants to do. Um, OK, it actually lands. Maybe they'll burn it, uh, but that's perfectly fine as well. Uh, we're not necessarily trying to, to make this stick. It'd be great if it did, but not not terribly worried about it. Uh, Wall of Lost Thoughts is quite good here. OK, they are just going to radical idea. 
Uh, throwing a shock down. Okay. Cool. Works for me. Uh, very curious to see what this deck ends up being. Could be an Arclight Phoenix deck. Given that they're running jump start uh, in a historic format, I could very easily see where they'd want to be able to discard some cards, things like that. Uh, that being said, though, I feel like there's a lot more efficient ways to do that uh, or to draw and discard cards. So maybe that's not correct. I, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, very excited for this deck though. Again, Uro, thank you so much. This is a fun one. Uh, I did test this deck a little bit prior to actually jumping into these games, so I do have a little bit of experience with it. Not a lot, but just enough to kind of get my hands wrapped around it uh, a little bit here, and I'm pretty happy with it. I like it. Uh, I think we've got some real chance to, to do some work. Uh, one thing to keep in mind as well with these Wall of Lost Thoughts, um, not that this will come in handy the majority of the time, so please understand that's not going to be the norm, but I was actually in testing against a reanimator deck, and it actually came up that I could mill them out, or at least get very close, with Wall of Lost Thoughts, which I thought was kind of interesting. It's something to think about, uh, that that might be an option that presents itself at some point down the line here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and Fable Passage first. Uh, if they want to try and answer this, we can countervailing wins and maybe do something about it. We'll see. Um, but it looks like they're just going to let it happen. Uh, I'm going to take blue. We definitely want more blue at this point, I believe. Uh, let's go ahead and attack here. Perfect. Uh, and chances are they just block. Cool. That's perfectly fine. Uh, we get something off the field here. And keeping in mind, this does have tramples, so we actually still get to leave it up. Uh, and I am going to go for uh, girl knock here again kind of expected some kind of interaction but maybe we're just above their their burn here uh i don't know maybe they just have two mana burn we'll see um but the over slime starting to get some counters is obviously quite good for us uh and hopefully we can get some cards milled here and with the splendid reclamation in hand we actually can do some work okay electro dominance sure and there's the goblin electromancer perfectly fine uh we actually have another one here that's funny um Okay, well, first things first, again, we are just going to attack in here uh, and see what they do. I'm kind of curious as to what the best option is here. Uh, interesting that they're blocking. That seems kind of, I don't know. I don't feel like that's the best play, but maybe maybe they got a sweeper this coming turn. Maybe they got something really good. Um, okay, Chemister's Insight. This is an interesting deck that our opponent is running. Um, not 100% sold on it, I'll be honest. Okay, uh, first things first, we just attack. Uh, gonna be milling a few cards if this does stick around, and we're gonna leave up that countervailing wins uh, just in case we can actually counter a spell here. Um, now, this is actually a prime time to counter something if they do try and remove a creature. We just countervailing wins, get that, that uh, card out of hand for our opponent, and then they really, most likely, can't do anything about it, uh, which is fantastic. Our opponent also playing slightly slow. Uh, not that that's a bad thing, it's perfectly fine. There's that guy's blessing that you're seeing. So this is where um, it shuffles in. Bit of a non-bow, 100%, uh, but it does keep things moving forward for us, which is actually quite nice. Uh, I'm very happy to see that. Um, let's go ahead and, oh, wow. I completely meant to play World Shaper. That was just a mistake, 100% on me, Uro, I am so sorry, 100% uh, my bad. That was just a waste of a card entirely. Uh, whoops. <laughs> That's okay, we'll we'll make do, we'll make do. Uh, if we lose this game though, this is on me, Uro, this isn't on you. All right, there's the Niv Mizzet. Fully expected to see Niv at some point here. Uh, that is perfectly fine. I am going to Wall of Lost Thoughts first. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is if we get a land or two, we can actually push this up and uh, hopefully take on this little guy here. And we also just get more more things. Uh, Frost or Fear of Death is actually very good here because it is going to really shut down the Niv a little bit at least uh, to make it really not so powerful. Um, I say that it's not that powerful. <laughs> um, and I think we just attack with the 6-6 six, six here. They're pretty pretty much apt to blocking this, I would imagine. Um, but maybe not. No, they're just going to take it. Okay. Works for me. 
Um, if anything, this is now uh, really interesting. So if you remove three counters uh, from it, return it to its owner's hand, return three target land cards from the graveyard to your hand. Okay, so when this leaves the battlefield, we actually get to return a land to our hand, but we also just get to protect this if we'd like to. Um, I don't know that we'll need to, personally. Um, this does have tramples, so we're gonna be doing a lot. And there we go, Uro. Thankfully, despite my misplay, <laughs> we did get the win. Congratulations. Let's move on to game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, and this isn't a great hand, to be honest. Uh, but, hmm. I think we have to mulligan. Uh, this is honestly a much stronger hand. We've got a lot more we can do. Uh, I'm just going to, no, I think it's the guy's blessing. Guy's Blessing seems like the right call. Uh, that's really a card we want more in our deck, not in our hand. Uh, despite it being good kind of anywhere, uh, it, it just doesn't seem like the kind of thing we want right away. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this out. The reason I choose this over the Wall of Lost Thoughts is that this does get in for damage. It's not a lot of damage, I know, but every point counts, and I feel like if we can push that a little bit, then it's certainly worth it. Um, we'll go ahead and throw this down. We'll attack him for one. And we'll Wall of Lost Thoughts, uh, milling ourselves here. See what we hit? There's the Gaia's Blessing. That is going to shuffle everything back in. So essentially that did nothing, uh, which is fine. It would have actually been quite nice with the Splendid Reclamation in hand. We could have done quite a bit. Uh, ooh, okay. So we're going to pay two here. Uh, we're definitely just going to drop the Omnivore and pass. Um, very curious to see what ends up happening here. We could just lose it any second with a deck like this. Uh, whatever could you attack? Yeah, this is going to be a scary, scary game. Um, we'll go ahead and do this. Do we just... Okay. So we get to play some of this uh, from our hand here, which is kind of nice. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, we'll just get a green source. Doesn't really matter too much. And I'll go ahead and play a Splendid Reclamation. It's only a one lander, I do understand that, but what this does is guarantee us Garuda next turn, uh, which is pretty important. All right, so this is how we die, right? Hmm. This is definitely just how we die. So whenever a creature attacks you... Okay, so... Does that mean we just cannot attack them? We'll take a second just to make sure. Uh, let's go to our graveyard. Let's get that world shaper. <clears throat> all right, all that gets shuffled back in. Um, okay, whenever a creature attacks your planeswalker, you control the player loses one life and you gain one life. Whenever a player loses life, you gain that much life. So I don't think that we're just going to do it. We die, we die. I think we were going to anyway. Yeah. All right, that was on me, but I definitely think that's a loss for us regardless, because we just can't attack. So at some point we were gonna lose. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and concede here. That's a really fun little combo. That's on me, but that was really cool. So let's move on to game three, Uro. We still got one more left. All right, guys, here we are. This is our third and final game. Uh, Uro again, my fault on that last game, but at some point they all they had to really do is activate lifelink on that veto. Uh, and they would have won it that way. So I don't feel bad that we were, I don't think we were gonna win that regardless, but still my fault entirely. Let's hope we can do better this game. Uh, this is an interesting hand for sure. We've got the Eversign plus the uh, the Omnivore here, which is, I think, quite good. Uh, whoops. What worries me is this is definitely a Chandra deck. So they're gonna be able to copy abilities here, which is quite terrifying. Um, hopefully. We can kind of outpace them a little bit. It's like they've got that Fire Prophecy, though, which is unfortunately a very good card. We would love a land here. More than anything, that would be the most important thing we could get. That would uh, guarantee us the Omnivore or uh, at least something down the line here, depending on what land it is, of course. So let's see what we can do. All right, uh, I mean, I'll take it. That's a land. We do have to shock ourselves to do it, but I think it's worth it to get this down. Hopefully this doesn't eat a removal spell if we can kind of push through a little bit here, but we'll see. <clears throat> the, the regulator is a scary card. All right, so they do have the frostbite. 
fair enough, fair enough. They are going to be able to answer most of what we can do, I imagine. Uh, which is fine. Uh, there's just not much we, we're going to be able to do about it. We're just going to have to push through as best we can. Uh, we will get a blue source here. If we can. There we go. Uh, and we'll drop the omnivore. Now, chances are, again, they've probably got a way to deal with this, or if not, they uh, they will get one quite shortly. So we'll do the best we can. That's all I can say. Uh, we do have Splendid Reclamation in hand, which is at the moment just going to hit a Fabled Passage. But if we can keep the Omnivore around, we might be able to get one or two extra lands off of it. Uh, and the Fear of Death will help against any creatures. Now, I'm not expecting a lot of creatures, I'll be honest. Uh, given that this is a Chandra deck, I'm assuming with the Regulator. Seems like pretty likely that we're just going to run into some Planeswalkers here. Uh, they've got three mana available, one of which they could use for this. Looks like they're going this route, though. Interesting. Okay, curious to see where this actually lands. Um, a Sledge Monster. <laughs> Alright, well, first things first, obvious play. Uh, definitely want to attack first. Given that this exiles things with the counters on them, we might be able to play them, but it looks like here we've just got the Gaia's Blessing, uh, which kind of takes that option away from us. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Does this have to activate? That's really unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. Oh, I don't like Sludge Monster. Or, uh, this seems like an interesting call. Maybe I shouldn't have played this, but I thought that was a May ability. That seems bad. Seems really bad. Uh, okay. Not much we can do. Uh, that was, I guess, just a misplay, but I feel like we need to kill stuff, or kill them as quickly as we can, so... They're gonna get a nice little, uh, two for turn. Uh, I really like World Shaper. All right, let's do this. World Shaper is quite good. We do want to get at least one attack in with it so we can actually, well, hopefully hit some lands. Uh, all right. Two mana available. Looks like they're going to spend one of it. Oh, they had a Pyromancer in hand. Interesting. Okay. They're going to scry to the bottom. Uh, let's attack in. Going to mill the three cards. Okay, we got two lands off of that. Uh, I do like that. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, we'll we'll pull both of these here. Uh, this just guarantees that we can play literally anything we draw at this point. Uh, it also just gets two lands on the battlefield. It's not a huge hit by any means, but it's something. Uh, and at some point we'll drop that Gaia's Blessing, I'm sure. The uh, Fear of Death here is pretty useless, unfortunately. Sure. Uh, it just isn't going to be doing much against a deck like this unless they somehow get creatures out, which I, I just don't envision being the case. I think this is very much a big red deck. Uh, and so we're we're going to be facing some powerful Planeswalkers at some point, and they did scry to the top here, which is probably a good sign. Uh, all right. Let's obviously go here. Actually. All right, listen. Here Here's the thought. We do this, we might be able to mess them up a little bit here. So what do we want them to have, if anything? I think submit zero and we just make them shuffle their deck. What this does is basically force them to shuffle, uh, which the card they scribed to the top is no longer at the top, uh, is the idea. Um, now that could have helped greatly or it could not have, but regardless, we got to draw a card, so. All right. Cool. I think it definitely helps then. Uh, now they still have two cards available to them thanks to that, so that's a little bad, but it is what it is. All right. They scribe to the top. All right. And we just keep drawing Splendid Reclamation. We just have nothing in the graveyard. Unfortunately, this is just a deck where we don't have much interaction with them. Uh, and wow. Brass's Bounty creating six treasure tokens. Quite good, quite good. Uh, this is going to be quite scary. <clears throat> yep. All right, uh, they get the lands. How many cards are left in their decks? 52, oh my gosh. It's a fiery emancipation deck. That makes so much sense now. Um, 
Okay, Garuda is kinda sick. Let's see if this actually works, though. Uh, our graveyard. I think it's definitely World Shaper. Alright. This may not be amazing, but it's something. It's somewhat threatening. So we're gonna hope for the best. <laughs> There's the Gutter Snipe. That's a scary card with that Fiery Emancipation out. They did discard a card just to draw one, and they didn't have much. Okay, they draw a card, they draw a card. All right. Uh, I think we just play this out. We just have to hope we're fast enough, and I just don't think we will be. Um, but we're going to do the best we can. going to take out the Garuda. This is so good. Triple that damage. Oh, so good. All right. We're going to shuffle you back in. You. And I think Garuda. Uh, we definitely want the Garuda in there. Um, I'll go ahead and do the Splendid Reclamation play. And we'll attack in. Guess we could have done that first, but all right, that's going to shuffle our entire. <laughs> all right, that works. Um, yep. We have a million lands, so there's not going to be much left in our deck uh, aside from spells, which is certainly a positive. Uh, but unfortunately, they're drawing quite a number of cards every turn. Um, and I mean, they've got as much mana as they need, plus a fiery emancipation. Wow. Okay, yeah. So good. Uh, there's the gutter snipe again. That's such a good little combination they've got going here. All right, we have to hope to get something good. They drew a card. This is useless, but we'll do it. Uh, this mills two cards, which is about the only good thing about it. Um... Okay, go ahead and crack this. We could fear of death again, just to mill more stuff, uh, which isn't good, but we're just gonna do it. <laughs> it has no other target, so it really doesn't matter. Um, do this. And I'm gonna do this. I know it's only for a Fable Passage, but at, we're dead at this point. If they just have any spell, Gutter Snipe kills us. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell. Oh, man. Yeah. Dang. What an interesting deck. If we... I think if we had drawn better, we certainly could have gotten the win. Um, good game by the opponent. If we had drawn better, I think we could have done it. But unfortunately, we just... We hit so many Splendid Reclamations. Ugh. All right. Let's chat about it. Uro, first of all, thank you so much again for submitting a deck to this. You're very consistent with your submission, so I really appreciate that. It means a lot to have you here. Uh, thank you so much. This has been a fun deck. Unfortunately, we only got one win, but that's better than no wins, so you're definitely in the lead. Way to be there. Uh, that's pretty good. So at least you are on the board, my friend. We will have two more decks on Wednesday and Friday, and keep in mind, again, this is the last week for the challenge week until the new year. So, uh... I don't know, save up on your deck building skills, do something cool later. We'll see. Uh, but regardless, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you again very soon.